Hi everybody! Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's midnight. Uh, I don't even know the date. <laughs> Yeah, 28th or 29th. This is Pastor Song uh, from Lighthouse Global and uh, guess where we're at? We're at, you are looking at the One World Trade Center right behind me with wonderful colors. Um, I think New York City is full of these rainbow colors because this month is a pride month, I believe. But um, yeah, you can look at the building in the back. And I want you guys to say hello to some of my friends who are here all the way from Philadelphia. So Philadelphia Eagles are here. And uh, let me let me flip the camera so you guys can say hi. Hold on. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Hello. Yes. So they are here uh, praying for me and they were here uh, of this weekend to help me strategize about the oxygen project we really believe that the oxygen project will go to different cities and we're praying for the new jesus movement to arise hi aloha also from hawaii it's great to see you guys um i just want to start us off with a word of prayer so welcome to midnight revival you're uh, you're watching me right in front of the world uh, trade center and also in front of the oculus the fishbone building I like to call it. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your word to go forth today. I pray for anointing. I pray for power. I pray for a now word. I pray for miracles in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah. Um, so I wanted to share a short testimony that I think would really encourage you what God's doing through these midnight revivals. Every time I... Um, I do these revivals it's a real step of faith obviously you know I put the kids to sleep and I take a little nap and then I wake up again and I put my makeup, makeup on to come out and see you and um, you know it's it's I, I do this because I really believe that there's something very significant about the church being awake at the midnight hour and I'm doing it as a prophetic declaration I believe when I'm awake at midnight preaching you know it, this is midnight there's secrets to midnight one in the Bible Paul and Silas uh, were worshiping worshiping the Lord at midnight and the prison doors open and I feel that midnight is an hour hello everybody great to see you all midnight is an hour when um, the devil is you know attacking God's people uh, that's when the, the it's the darkest it's like prophetically the darkest hour of the soul and when we are awake worshiping Jesus there are miracles that happen prison doors open so there's that secret another thing I believe uh, is that midnight is when the witches are very active this is really when from midnight to three o'clock I think that's when the demonic realm feels like they're in control and I've done a lot of nighttime ministry I've done like all night uh, worship all all night party all night prayer all night concerts to wake up at midnight because midnight and nighttime from 12 to 3 that's when the devil is very active that's when that he thinks that he's in control and how many of you know that violent crimes and suicides and um, and people you know demonic uh, visitations happen at midnight at nighttime and I really am passionate about the church waking up and staying awake 24 hours so that is why I'm awake at this hour because we know that right now there's a great battle in the spirit realm so if, you're, if you want to say yes and amen, please respond and say yes and amen. And I want to encourage you guys to also share this video as well with your friends because the Lord's really, uh, there's a lot of amazing now words. Um, you know, one biggest testimony that we have out of these midnight uh, prayers is that uh, I was doing one of these preachings and an orphanage in Uganda was watching and a 12 year old girl uh, received her miracle and she started walking. So that's a miracle. But today's word that I want to bring to you and the reason why um, I wanted to preach here in this space is because um, I wanted to talk to you guys about spirit of martyrdom and about, um, about the sacrifice of, of martyrs and the blood of martyrs. And so when I came to 9-11, I'm, I'm here at ground zero in 9-11. Uh, before I pray, I'm going to just do some warfare. I feel like there's a lot of, uh, of resistance here. You all who are watching, let's pray with me. Pray with me. Let's pray together. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Father. Father, fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit. Jesus, 
us. We bow down before you, Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. My lover, lover, Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Father, we worship you. We pray that you will fill this space with your presence. When there's nothing, when there's no one, when the city is quiet, I pray that your presence will just invade in this city. I pray that your spirit of God, your, your spirit will just invade and uh, make this ground holy. The blood of Jesus is a cover. Make this ground holy where there was sin, where there was victimization, and where there was an attack, Father, against this nation. I pray that the blood of Jesus will just cleanse this area, cleanse this place, cleanse this, uh, this, this area, physical region that was hurt and attacked, Father. The wound of America that is still here, Father. I pray that you would release the blood of Jesus to cover this land in Jesus' mighty name. We worship you. We worship you, mighty Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Father, Father, Father. I lift your name on high. I lift your name on high. I lift the name of Jesus. Oh, fill this place with your presence. Fill this place with your presence. Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords, King of Glory, come in. King of Glory, we welcome you, Jesus. Cleanse this place with your blood. Cleanse this space with your blood. Cleanse this nation with your blood, Jesus. Father, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Well, I pray that you raise up worshipers out of the city. We raise up worshipers in America, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. So, guys, the word I had for you was this. Philippians 1.21 for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Hi, everybody. Um, now, in this side of 9-11, everyone knows what happened uh, is September 11th. Uh, and this is where uh, America was attacked and there was a violent crime against this nation uh, out of hatred for, for what this nation stands for. Whatever reason, you know, there was an attack. And every time I come and visit, this is uh, this whole Wall Street area is really one of my favorite places. But every time I come visit, I hear the Lord saying that that there are some martyrs that are buried in this ground, and these are people who innocent people who died. And some of you might not agree with me, and that's fine. But the Lord spoke to me and said there are some people who are innocent, just normal civilians, people who were there that day. Um, they just uh, went down, and. Um, that there was innocent blood that was shed. And how many of you know that when there was blood, innocent blood that is shed in a certain geographical location, uh, there's, there's a, a sacredness about it. There's something very significant about it where uh, there's rebirth, there's healing that must also happen, and there has to be a reconciliation, there has to be a transformation of some sort. So um, I really feel that um, God is asking us to remember those who are fallen, not just in the soil of America here, where the war was kind of brought into the, the land of America, but even those uh, places of massacre outside of America where American soldiers died, and not just Americans, but where your soldiers have died, your people have died, um, even for the Korean uh, war veterans in South Korea and in North Korea, and people who have died for the sake of whatever they stood for. And wherever there was a bloodshed, there's something very significant and a redeeming of God that God wants to do. Uh, there's there's a, a very in-depth kind of unexplainable sacredness about death. Uh, and that's why Jesus exchanged, Jesus died for us to give us life. You know, the, the mystery of the cross is, is uh, it's difficult to understand that God sent his one and only son to die for us that in exchange of his life, he gave us a rebirth. He gave us resurrection. When we believe in Jesus Christ, who died for my sins, that we, we uh, receive life. And that's the gospel. 
And sometimes this truth of the gospel is very difficult to understand with the human mind. That's why people argue about it. Some people deny it. But you know, um, I just wanted to uh, just preach to you and say, um, God sees every blood that was shed. God uh, remembers every fallen soldier. God remembers every fallen martyr. God remembers every sacrifice that we make in the name of Jesus Christ. And um, he wants to pour out a, a revelation about what it means to die for Jesus, what it means to be a martyr. So here we go. I just feel that um, there's a new birth that God is preparing for um, this season. And he's saying, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is Cain. In Philippians, Paul said, uh, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. What, a, what an amazing word of the Lord. I don't even know how to preach on it. Because I really believe that in this season, the Lord wants to pour out a spirit of martyrdom, uh, willingness to die upon us. And that is the only way that I could see how revival could be birthed. Now, do you really want revival? When I preach about revival, I always tell people, uh, the reason why revival is not here is because people don't really want it. Revival, saving of souls, salvation of millions, the billion soul harvest, the great revival, the visitation of God. Uh, when, 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 when we talk about these things, my challenge to believers and myself is, do you really, really want this? And now warriors, people who are watching this, put your hand in your heart and ask yourself, do you really want transformation? Do you really want revival? And if the answer is yes in your spirit, this is a word for you. Um, the reason why revival is not here is because deep down we don't want it. Because dying to myself is inconvenient. It's uh, uncomfortable. It's not what your flesh wants. It's not uh, pretty. It's uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> uh, Jesus, help us. Uh, people don't really want it. That's why they don't sacrifice. That's why they don't get up at midnight and do what I do. That's why they don't go out and feed the homeless. That's why we don't pray in the morning at five o'clock. That's why we don't uh, sacrifice and fast uh, for the name of Jesus. That's why we don't give financially. You know, we have become too comfortable. We don't want revival. The Holy Spirit falls on people who really want him. Amen. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's an entity. He's a, He's a person of God. Holy Spirit is a person of God. How many of you believe that? Holy Spirit is a person of God. If he's not invited, he's not gonna come. If he's not wanted, he's not gonna come. We cannot uh, uh, invite him cheaply. We can't be, in, like, he's not gonna come. How many of you will go, like, if I'm invited to a place to preach, I'm not gonna go to a place where they don't like me or they, they're gonna you know, treat me like a cheap person, right? I'm gonna go happily to a place where they invite me, where they welcome me. It's, I can be more free and welcoming. I can do my thing when they welcome me, you know? It's the same thing. Holy Spirit is a person of God. He will come to those who welcome him because he's like a person. The reason why Holy Spirit visitation is not here in this country, in your country, in your nation, in your neighborhood is because deep down, you people don't want it. And my prayer in this season, oh God, increase our hunger. Let us be hungry for you. Let us want you. Let us die to ourselves. Let us want you. And you know, he is uh, bringing an outside hunger and frustration. He's making you hungry. He's making you poor in spirit so that you can spiritually be in a place of wanting him more. How many of you want more of Jesus because of outside circumstances, because of persecution that you had? It's because when things were shaken up, it's because you had to go to church because you were so desperate. It was because, you know, something happened in your family, like you had a breakup, you had a divorce, you had a, you had a financial disaster, you had a child that was a prodigal and you really had to seek the Lord. That's when you experience revival because God allowed certain situations where you had to be hungry. You had to long for the Lord. So uh, my, uh, my preaching to you today, my word for you is, um, the Lord is, is wanting us to have an increased hunger for Jesus. He wants us to want Him. And may you be filled with the hunger of God. May you be filled with a hunger towards the Lord. May you want the Lord more than anything else. May you pursue Him, may you seek Him. The revival is not here. You know, I, uh, when COVID hit, I thought it would get people to be on his knees. How many of you know that like David Wilkerson said in his preaching, pastor of Times School Church, he said, 
uh, government will shut, New York City will shut, things will be really awful, there will be a pandemic, and then the prayerless church will become a prayerful church. But um, how many of you also know that even with the pandemic, still, we are still prideful. Uh, are we at the level of being a prayerful church even now? Are you guys hungry? Are you, are you praying? Are you seeing revival around you? And the answer, I think a lot of you might say, Pastor Song, not really. I mean, we still have it okay. Uh, we're okay, so not really. We're not that hungry, you know? <laughs> and how many of you know also that miracles happen mo much more in nations like Africa, in nations like Southeast Asia, where they're really, really hungry for Jesus? Even in South Korea, I was so, so, so hungry. I was so, so, so hungry. When I was ministering in my 20s, my only hope throughout 12 months, like all year, I was so poor and so hungry. And many of you don't believe this, but I was. I was in a very desperate place. Like I said, I could write thousands of books on the persecution I had. But I was so hungry and I was so desperate that my only hope and, and, and my, um, my hope was to once a year get on a flight and go to Canada, Toronto to go to a pastor's conference. That was my once a year, like my gift from the Lord. That was the only time I would fly out. And it, you know, I didn't have money to go very often. And so once a year I'd go and then um, they, they have prophecy sessions and I would sign up and, and they'll release the prophetic word. And that, that was like my lifeline. That, that was like my lifeline for the whole year. Because when I land in South Korea, it was like curses left and right. People hated me. And they still hate me there. That's why I don't preach in Korean anymore. <laughs> oh, you guys are finding out a lot about how, how painful it was for me. Anyway, um, you know, for me, like, to go, and I was so hungry. And I would just go and lay on the carpet, and you know, and receive prayer, and uh, just all by myself. I didn't, have, I didn't have friends even. I was just by myself in, in Toronto. And that was my only escape once a year. But, you know, I was so hungry. And I, I remember uh, even in the midst of uh, me being persecuted in South Korea, because I was so hungry, Holy Spirit showed up big time, all the time. And even now, you know, if you ask me like, Song, why are you so crazy? Uh, don't even like admire me for what I'm doing because you guys think that I'm a little cuckoo for being in the streets. We still, we went to homeless and we, we today I pray for a transgender woman. <laughs> she was very, con well, anyway, I have word about her. It was a man who was dressed like a woman, but she, you know, it was a, it was a she. And um, I had to uh, pray for her and I saw her in a white dress. So I promised her to buy her a white dress. And she really wanted to wear black. But I said, you know, Jesus wants to make you holy and he wants to give you a white dress. And, and when I asked her, like, um, I'm going to post that video. But when I asked her, like, um, you're going to have a dream tonight. And you're going to see Jesus. And you know what she said? This transgender woman, he, she said, oh, I really hope to meet him. I mean, she said that she was so desiring to see Jesus. So please pray. There's so many out there who want to see Jesus. She was hungry. She was homeless. And I was just giving her some food and everything. And there's so many people who are hungry. Jesus will come to those who are desperate and hungry. So may you uh, restore. May you be poor in spirit. <laughs> That's a word of blessing. May you be desperate for God. That's a word of blessing. May you thank the Lord for every negative circumstance that put you in a place of spiritual hunger, spiritual desperation, of wanting Jesus more. May you thank the Lord for the spouse that left you. May you thank the Lord for the, for the uh, bank uh, financial pressures. May you thank the Lord for the prodigal son. May you thank the Lord for, for uh, being in a miserable place. May you thank the Lord for being laid off from your job. May you thank the Lord for COVID-19. May you thank the Lord for, for you know, the, having to move like 20 times in, you know, in 10 years because that, that thing has made you hungry. That took you, that took you from a place of being prideful to a place of being, wanting more of the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. So, so I declare this word over you and God says, you know, um, he wants to pour out the spirit of martyrdom over the Western church, the Western church over us. Um, I pray that this spirit of martyrdom will lead you to a place of radical love, lead you to a place of being a radical revivalist in Jesus' mighty name. So Paul says to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. What does that mean? I don't even know, but I'm just going to say it. <laughs> to live is Christ and to die is gain. What does that mean? What does that mean? I can confess to you that when I live my days these days, every day I wake up, 
and I think that today's my last day on earth. That's how I live. I know it sounds crazy, but I live today like today's my last day on earth. That's the spirit of martyrdom. I know it's radical. It's like, it doesn't mean that I want to die tomorrow or I'm depressed and I, I'm trying to die tomorrow. That's not what I'm saying. I feel like I wake up and I say, I face so much pressures and I, I face enemies all the time. And I think, you know, if today was my last day on earth, what am I going to do? If tomorrow something terrible happens and somebody's trying to kill me because of my faith, what am I going to do? And I think, you know what? I think I'm going to go and feed another homeless person. I think today I want to preach again. I want to preach and, and let people know. I think today, because tomorrow might not be here, I think I'm going to give my little kid another hug and tell him how much God loves him. I think what I'm going to do is reach out to that person and say, I really forgive you. I think what I want to do is I want to make a difference. I want to be, be wise about how I spend my money um, if today's my, my last day on earth. Now that kind of attitude, I think, is spirit of martyrdom. I know it sounds crazy. You know, this is not something normal prophets say. Some normal prophets say, oh, the best days are ahead. You know, you got your glory days ahead. And you know, God has all these things in store for you. And I could say all those things, and I've said that before, and I've encouraged you with all of that. But you know, in my real life, I could say it, and I believe it. And I, I still do believe that there are best days ahead. But, but you know, I know my best, best days are in heaven. <sighs> I know my, my best days are not on earth. Your best days are ahead of you, but your, your best eternal life, I know heaven is much better than earth. So I'm okay with going to heaven. I'm okay if something happens to me. I'm okay with getting COVID-19 while I minister to the homeless. I'm okay with being made fun of. I'm okay with people hating me because I might live towards heaven. I live towards heaven. I live, to, I live for Jesus. And I, I, walk, I walk among the saints. I walk with them. And I know they, I know they, wor they love me. I know this sounds crazy. I know that saints in heaven, they like me a lot. I know that there are people who are, who, who like, who are like cheering on for me. I have no hope on this earth. I have nothing. It just, it's just a shadow. You know, this earth is just a shadow. Even the biggest problems I face, it just doesn't really matter that much. Like, it's so like trivial. <laughs> like happiness on earth is like so trivial. And I just know that like, the Lord is real. Jesus is so uh, real. And there are people in heaven that, that look down and they, uh, they talk to me. And so why would I fear death? And you know, like, I'm having the best of my time of my life because everyone else is afraid of death. What you're afraid of like, you want to really be on earth where it's miserable and like earn your money and buy that house. It's nothing compared to my mansion up in heaven. I'm not going to fight over that. I'm not going to fight over that piece of pie that you guys all fight over on earth. I, I, I've kind of risen above it. I kind of gave all of that up. <laughs> I've given that up already. I've given that up already before I started ministry. When I was little, I knew that Jesus was real. There was no ambition in me. Like I didn't really, and that was my biggest problem. Like if you ask me, well, Song, um, do you want to be like the greatest preacher? Like people prophesy over me and say, oh, you're like this, this uh, whatever. But you know, honestly, like I really don't care. I actually really don't like those prophecies. Who cares if I have the biggest church? Who cares if I become famous? Who cares? You know, it just doesn't matter, you know? So what's in your heart? What, you know, what are you afraid of? You know, like, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Nothing, nothing. Even the kids, like they belong to Jesus. They're not mine. It's not hard for them to give, give them up. So there you go, you know. 
my gosh, today's like, I don't know. That was the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you would, you would raise up heavenly people who consider the things of this earth as nothing. People of God who, who can just mock the world and say, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Like this, this, the devil can try to make deals with them. And that was the next word that I was gonna t give of how people are fighting over something so petty, fighting over piece of, uh, a big piece in the pie, you know, limitations and, and things that are so trivial, things that are so um, carnal, they're fighting over it and it's like a child's game. People are like children here on earth. Even the biggest names, you know, they're fighting. And I know I pray for the righteousness of the world and I pray for like presidents and I pray for big things and I pray for victory on earth, but you know, who cares? <laughs> who cares? Now I'm becoming a little more philosophical here. <laughs> but who cares? Like, don't, don't go to that level of being a childish Christian, fighting over those things, you know? We have our, our hope and our, our dream and our, our faith. We have our hope in heaven. We have our hope in Jesus Christ. We have our hope in the heavenly realm. Nothing on this earth should bother you. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. May we die. May we die. May we know the, the depth and the... May we, be, may we be happy being chosen to be a martyr, to be uh, uh, someone who can die for you. May we be happy and consider it a greatest honor to, to be walking upon this earth as a dead person in Jesus' mighty name. Consider it the greatest honor. You know, when I used to preach in South Korea, I used to say, I used to challenge young people and say, if you want to be a martyr, stand up and come up to the stage. And people would come and I say, well, you know why you can come up is because even if you volunteer to be a martyr, Jesus will really have to choose you. And he may not choose you. <laughs> I used to say, you can volunteer, but it's such a great honor. Like me being a martyr doesn't really depend on me. Get it? It's the greatest honor. So God has to choose you. And then, you know, we can volunteer. We can say, yay, Lord, I'll be it. But he has to choose you. So why not just come up and ask the Lord to give you the spirit of martyrdom that causes you to die to yourself on a daily basis. That we can walk like Paul walked. We can walk like Jesus walked. We can walk like what the apostles did. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would give us a new perspective, that we would know that it is the greatest honor for us to be chosen by you to, to die to ourselves and to walk in that path. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many of you are receiving this? And another, uh, before I, I close, I'm gonna prophesy over you. But before I close, I do want to say one thing, one of the reasons why the Lord brought me here to this place is because I really felt like right now there's a real battle between um, two masters. And the Lord said, Matthew 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And I really believe that. Um, it kind of goes along with spirit of martyrdom, but right now there's such a battle with money and this whole this whole battle right now is involves money Meaning this whole thing involves money by that. I mean There are people who are controlling the economy with money and and the devil is withholding money So you can compromise there's an issue of money people who have money in their hearts God is really challenging you. Are you serving money or are you serving God? You must deal with things in your heart. How do we know that we have money as our idol? We know when it becomes our deciding factor. We know when we make decisions based on finance. Ministry never, okay, the, the, the anointed ministries that I know, when I in ministry, money, could, money is never a factor. It's always faith. It's always the Lord's voice. It's always the Lord's will. 
when I hear the Lord's voice, it always goes counter money. It always goes against my bank account. It always goes against the reality of what I have. He says, go feed the poor. Listen, Jesus said to the disciples, feed the feed, you feed the 5,000. And then what did they say? They looked at their pockets and say, Lord, we can't do it, right? Isn't that how we always say? But that's not how it works. The Lord speaks and you obey and then the money will follow. Now, if you're a, uh, a pastor, uh, if you're an anointed um, person chosen by the Lord, you have to quickly come to this realization. You must uh, come to this place of understanding what that means. You hear God, you obey Him, and then the money will follow. Money is no longer a deciding factor. So if you're still captivated by this idea of your bank account and then making a decision, then I'm going to challenge you, break that off of you in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Because there's such a battle in the spirit realm right now, the devil is trying to uh, make you compromise your calling due to money. And he is breaking down the religious system of the world, even the church world, because I know so many friends of mine, so many pastors uh, in the church world where they decide their ministry based on their financial security. And you know, um, as a person who doesn't do that, <laughs> I battle with money and the God of money in so many uh, different situations. It's been very difficult because um, the whole world is based on that. and. Once you start, once you start um, compromising in the financial realm, once you start making those decisions because of money, once you start compromising yourself, um, then you give an opening to the devil and, and then you become a prey of the enemy. Basically, you are easy to manipulate. The devil can manipulate you. And I feel like right now there's such a war in the spirit realm, even the political realm, even in the national level, what's going on is that it's all about funding. It's all about funding. It's like, who funding you? So, you know, back in Korea, I did big events. I, I quickly learned that there was witch, witchcraft is always connected with finance. Now I'm getting to like strategic spiritual warfare strategy, okay? So what I quickly realized was that money was an issue, that very, very many of young pastors wannabes, young preachers wannabes in South Korea at least, I don't, maybe in the US, I don't know, but you know, young pastors quickly, they made decisions like church was a job and you were looking for a career opportunity and it was all about money package and uh, getting a good stable job and I rarely knew know anybody who actually heard the voice of God and said I really am, I feel called to do this so I'll do this no it was more like you send in a resume to a church and then they choose you and then you compare the package or you like go depending on the money it's very subtle, but that's what a lot of preachers do, a lot of pastors do. And that's what we saw our, our uh, forefathers do, so it's so easy to compromise in that way. And I felt like when I was ministering, I quickly realized that manipulation always came along with money. So one time God said, uh, the Lord quickly told me that I cannot receive funding from all the people that give me money. Like I have to reject some of the money that I get. If people are giving me money in order for me to curve my ways to please them, I have to denounce it. And I say, I don't want it. And what I'm sharing with you, this is not many people know how to do this because not all money is holy. You are not to receive all, you're not to receive everything that people give you because there's, there is agenda attached to it. There is control attached to it. There is witchcraft attached to it. Um, I was I was threatened by people who funded me over the phone privately they'll threaten me and then they will like burst out in anger because I didn't do what they wanted to do because I think when they approached me they thought that because I was a younger woman they thought that I would buy into their compromise or like have a uh, you know unspoken contract with them like if some pastor gives you let's say like two thousand three thousand dollars to do an event um, there's always an agenda behind it that means that I have to uh, change my event to make him look honorable or like put his name on poster it's all about politics but if I receive the money thinking that it was given to me out of purity that he really wanted to invest in the ministry and that was it and then I, for, I forget to like mention his name somewhere or I don't applaud him publicly, this person will be so mad at me and like start cursing me and then like leaving or something. These things happen so often. And I realized that a lot of times people would bribe you to uh, mold you and change you. It's like a bribe. And I become part of the crime by receiving it. 
So, so I'm speaking these things to you, but these, this is just a very small possible example. I have other stories that I'm not telling you, but these things happen all the time. These things happen everywhere across politics, businesses, you know, even like within church, like people who buy you lunches and buy you dinners and buy you gifts. You have to be very careful with the spirit that's attached to the gifts that are given to you. So you cannot receive everything that people give you. And when you are um, funding a ministry, when you are investing in a ministry, when you are supporting a ministry, uh, and you want to come alongside a pastor who's doing great work, you have to really check your heart and you have to make sure that your heart is right. Your heart is uh, in a pure place where you're not wanting to manipulate this pastor or, or all of that. So this is a very important word because there is right now in the physical realm, we must pray for exposure of these connections with money. That's what we're dealing with because there are some uh, demonic, there's a devil that's attached to the funding of these organizations that are causing this havoc and causing these problems. And it's really about the money. So, bottom line, the Lord keeps saying, Song, you are feeding the poor, you're doing the oxygen project. You know, um, one day I woke up and I realized that I used up $2,000, $3,000 of my own, own finances for the oxygen project. I realized that I had spent my private money without knowing. I was just pouring it in to the ministry. And I, I realized that... Um, I'm just like giving it out. And the Lord said one day that the oxygen project was coming against a communist spirit. And the Lord said, you must uh, tell the church that the church is much more, church is in a higher authority realm. Church is in a higher place to provide than the world. Church is in a higher place to provide than the government. The church is in a higher place of authority to be able to save a city. The church is in a higher realm of authority to be able to um, help people. The church is in a higher place of authority to be able to provide and save a nation. How many of you believe it? I believe it. The Acts Church, they, they lived a communal life. They shared everything they had. When, when revival hit and, and the Holy Spirit came, what did people do? People gave everything they had, to, they laid it in front of the apostles' feet. They gave everything they had and, and there was a financial transaction, but it was a communal thing. We, the people took care of each other. So that is what must happen in the body of Christ in this hour. That is the greatest weapon because if we, church, don't understand this idea of, of us being communal, us giving everything we have and truly believing that our provision comes from our Heavenly Father, if we don't get to that place, higher place, the devil is going to snatch people. He's going to captivate nations and make financial transactions so you become a captive. You, he, the devil is trying to take you back to Egypt, not push you towards your promised land. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for anointing upon this word because this is the word of the Lord. I feel very strongly about this. You have to come out of your Egypt and your bank account is like your ticket to Egypt. Your job security is your, your, your uh, ticket back to Egypt. Ticket back to Sodom and Gomorrah. You want to be the salt pillar? Go back to Sodom and Gomorrah. You want to be the salt pillar? You want to go back to the complaining Israelites? Go back to Egypt. Your job security, your bank account, your little checkbook, that is your ticket back to your past. Cut that out in Jesus' mighty name. God says, Matthew, who are you serving? Are you serving God or money? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for boldness. I pray for warriors who say, Father, for the gospel, I can be poor. I can be rich. You can give me millions of dollars and I can give it away in one day if you say yes. I can, I can drive a small little minivan. I can drive a, a, a broken down car if you tell me to. I can drive a big car. It doesn't really matter. I am free from all of it. I am free. In Jesus' mighty name, nothing will stop me from doing your will. If, if the Lord takes everything away, I will still be preaching in Jesus' mighty name. You have to come to a place like that, a boldness and living for Jesus. No hindrance. Not in fear, but in faith. 
in Jesus' mighty name. God can transfer you to Africa. You can be living among the poor and it's totally fine. You can be in New York City in the penthouse and you can be fine, but that doesn't even bother you. It doesn't even change anything about you. The core of you is the same. God wants to keep you in the, in, in the center, keep him in the center of your heart. He, he doesn't want you to change. He's calling for these warriors who are free from money, free from money. So Father, you can take away everything and I can have nothing, but I can be happy and rejoice. I can have tons of money and I can rejoice and be happy. If you say give it away and build something in some other country, we'll do it. If you say live here, we do it. He's looking for those who are obedient, who have pure hearts in Jesus' mighty name, who are not controlled by the God of money, who are not controlled, manipulated by the Jezebel of money in Jesus' mighty name. So Father, in the name of Jesus, expose every devil that is attached itself to the to the outward causes to the funding the connection of funding I pray for breaking off of these ch channels of funding these financial connections that's causing a, a inroad of witchcraft to be manip to, to be uh, to be expressed in the world I pray for exposure right now in Jesus name I pray for exposure of I pray for exposure of these financial connections. I pray for exposure of, of who's funding what right now in, in the name of Jesus. That you will, I command uh, the, the well of finance that's from the demonic realm to be dried up in Jesus' mighty name. The devil's, devil's wealth will be dried up in this hour in Jesus' mighty name. That's the word of the Lord right now. Agree with me. Devil's a well and pool of money will be dried up in this hour in Jesus' name. The inroads, the, the tr contributions, the way that this money is transferred, that path will be blocked right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything, every funding that is funding the demonic agenda will be cut off in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. And in the same time, I declare in the name of Jesus that there'll be wealth transfer into the church and the body of Christ. There'll be overflowing of financial provision, not only financial, but creative ideas, inventions. I prefer overflow of, of the heavenly wealth to be poured into the people of God, people who have pure hearts, people who did not compromise according to the money. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, there'll be overflowing of rain, 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 rain. That the dry wells be filled with water in this hour. I see dried up wells being filled with the water and the overflow of the Lord, the provision of God in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. This is the word of the Lord. So God bless you. I, I bind every distraction right now in Jesus' name. And I pray for this word to manifest in the next coming month even in Jesus' mighty name. I really strongly feel that this is the word of the Lord. Warriors, keep your hearts pure and holy. This is ground zero in New York City. God has heard the prayers of the people. God is healing the wounds of America. Every land in America that had had massacre of some sort, the Lord is going to bring a visitation to heal those wounds. God is going to hear, hear the hearts of the people who have been crying out. The blood of the martyrs have been crying out to the Lord. God is coming with vengeance. God is coming with a mighty, uh, Jesus is coming back with vengeance and favor upon God's people. Even those who are connected to 9-11 who lost family members here, I see ven the word vengeance and vengeance manipulation. Uh, expressing in your life through favor of the Lord there's greater favor that's coming upon those who lost their loved ones to the to the righteous cause of America so I bless you all in Jesus mighty mighty name and I pray for revival upon this land of New York City in Jesus name I pray for a shift and a turnaround in Jesus name I pray for the idol of money this one world tower even the pride of pride of money the 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 pride of Wall Street that these things will fall in Jesus name that God you will visit every family that have been worshiping money that you would you would expose their hearts father they would know that there's that's just vain it's vanity father let them seek Jesus Jesus take that place in in our hearts in Jesus mighty mighty name hallelujah praise you Jesus praise you Jesus praise you Jesus father fund every project that has not been advancing everything that you wanted to advance father I pray for new funding over you I declare that over you even as I speak um, the now word for you is there's greater provision that's coming for the vision those who are entrepreneurs, those who are pioneers, God is saying, provision for the vision of the Lord. Those who did not compromise, there's provision 
for the vision, says the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. With open arms, receive it. There's provision for some of the projects that have been delayed, music projects, movie projects, uh, uh, feeding the poor projects, even the oxygen, New York City. We've been waiting for big funding to come in so that we can continue this work. God is saying it is come. It is coming. Some of you have to do be a person who does the wealth transfer. God's going to remind you of people that you must contact in order for them to fund some of the things that are of the Lord. And the Lord is saying there's wealth that is being created and the Lord is saying there are uh, diamonds and things that are being discovered. You know, I released a word this month about wealth transfer to Africa and God doing something in Africa. And I just read an article uh, that some man in Africa in some country found this huge rock, like some dime, like he found this amazing rock and he became like a millionaire overnight. I read this article and I thought that's fantastic. It just re right, right lined up with the word of the Lord that I pro preached. And when I was in Minneapolis in George Floyd revival, I preached to Pastor, uh, I prophesied over Pastor Charles who's leading. I said, out of what's happening in Minneapolis, there's going to be a wealth, uh, there because wealth is going to be created and out of the wealth that's created out of the revival, God's gonna restore America. And afterwards I found out, I was having a phone call with somebody some ministry had collected money. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm preaching. Can I finish preaching? Oh, hold on. So, so when I was in Minneapolis, when I was in Minneapolis, the Lord um, gave me that word, and and then I found out that some ministry had collected funds to support this revival and it, they got they got huge funding so praise God for the ways that God is uh, manifesting this word in Jesus mighty name so father in the name of Jesus I bless every person that is watching I bless every project that is of the Lord I pray for amazing provision in Jesus mighty name bless you guys I think that's all for today there's so much more um, I just also want to just declare because I've been having some uh, irritation in my body and just I pray for uh, swelling to go down I pray for physical healing right now in Jesus name and I pray for healing from mental illness every devil that is causing mental breakdown and schizophrenia and um, bipolar I bind it in the name of Jesus bipolar be gone in Jesus mighty name mental illness depression the uh, domestic violence that's causing women to feel like they're they have multiple personality disorders or whatever that's related to mental illness like bind it in the name of Jesus I release amazing healing over you God is healing the minds of the people he's he's bringing unity in your identity he's healing your identity because really this depression has really harmed your identity God is saying my daughters my sons I'm restoring your identity so I bless I bless you in Jesus mighty name lastly the prophetic word I have for you today is prodigals are coming home prodigals are coming home make room for the prodigals make room for the prodigals Kawaiarala, new Jesus movement is rising up. Prodigals are coming home. Father, I pray that you will raise up. There's going to be amazing new churches that are planted. You're going to have to get, some of you have to get ready to start churches in your house, house churches, because you have to take in suddenly you will like overnight, you're going to have to plant a church because you have so many new believers. Overnight, God is going to raise some of you up to be disciplers. Overnight, some of you have to start preaching. So these suddenlies will come because there's going to be great harvest all across America. And that will inspire people in other nations to follow. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless America to be the apostolic father nation in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in ground zero, I pray that more worshipers will come out in every hour of the day to just worship and praise you. I pray that New York City will be known as a city of worship in Jesus' mighty name. For every city across America, in smaller cities, every sports arena will be turned into worship arena in Jesus mighty mighty name hallelujah all right guys that was it for today God bless you God bless you love you guys please share this video if it's uh, edifying I think there were some really important words it was just an amazing another midnight revival God bless you